Well, hello YouTube! Let's all FUD VV! That's what we're going to do today. We're going to be looking at what's changed and why the FUD is all about at the moment. But before we do that, let's get into the main stories of today's NFTs and all that kind of good stuff. All this stuff that I've missed out on because I haven't done a video for a while. So here we go. First up, National Geographic NFT launch meets massive backlash. They had a massive backlash from people. Now, this is kind of bullish in a way because it shows how early we are with NFTs because in this case, a lot of people are complaining about the environmental aspects and that kind of thing and they don't realize that these things are on Matic or they're on um, you know Immutable X like VV and therefore the environmental impact is a lot less than you know it probably takes them to write this out on their phone complaining about it so therefore um, you know that's kind of bullish to me that this is happening but uh, National Geographic launched their NFTs and they were met with this you know this thing they put they put up some Board Ape Yacht Club NFTs which kind of didn't help them because obviously Board Ape Yacht Club are known as being the uh, you know the ones they've got they've got so much behind them because obviously they're worth so much etc etc the newspapers like to uh, trivialize it don't they they like to trivialize the fact that it is a community of people and these people are dumb and blah 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 is what they say now obviously that's not true because you wouldn't buy something for that cheap and get it for that expensive now uh, and be dumb about it but the point is that you know uh, that's what they're trying to put in the newspaper. That's the thing they portray. And uh, unfortunately, National Ge Geographic are now being hit with that. Incidentally, I believe that VV was supposedly at one point going to possibly have a license with National Geographic. So does that mean now if they do release them on the app, then they are no longer FAs? They would just be FEs. So uh, yeah, that's interesting to figure out. Next up is this. It's a new law in New Jersey. Interesting, this one, or a new rule, should we say, but it is going to be law. And that is that um, they're basically putting in a new law that anyone who works with NFTs or does something has to get a license. So now uh, people are saying on the internet as well that that means if you buy NFTs or if you transfer NFTs, you're going to have to have a license if you're in New Jersey, which is going to put a massive strain on the idea of it being a simple process. Um, and I suppose it's good in some ways because it means that they're actually looking looking into this, they're seeing that this is going to be the future and they're seeing that they need to do something about it and therefore they're starting to put laws in place to try and prevent scams. Uh, well, that's in theory, that's that's what they're basically trying to say. Uh, they're trying to provide transparency, consumer protection and licensing structure for both operators and consumers engaging in virtual currency transactions. So that basically means that you would need to procure a license to engage in the digital asset business. Now. Um, I suppose you've got to think about the fact that you've got artists as well and those artists like you know sometimes they want to put uh, you know a piece of their art up as an NFT or something like that now they would possibly have to get a license but I'm not sure if it's only if they are in the state of New Jersey so that would basically mean that a lot of artists would like to move out of that state maybe I don't know uh, so uh, yeah let me know what you think of that one in the comments whether you think is good for crypto or bad they're trying to say that they're doing it for consumer protection but I guess it probably means that people are going to have to buy a license in order to be able to do these NFTs from now on so does that mean that the, the whole space in general will become one you know with uh, buying licenses and stuff because at the end of the day once it happens in one state then it can progress to other states like many other things and that is kind of the bad thing about it not necessarily that it's happening in this specific state but if it gets passed which I believe it has it got one vote against then that means that if it does get properly implemented then it can happen in other states as well in America and obviously be widespread across so uh, let me know what you think in the comments on that one Okay, so next up is this. It's all about Porsche. Uh, basically, they were doing an NFT mint, and uh, the price was, I believe, like 0.911 or something, or 0.0911. Either way, it was super expensive for the way the space is now at the moment. Um, so essentially, nobody wanted to buy it. Um, the NFT is still available at the end of the mint. Um, as you can see, there was uh, 7,500 of them in total, uh, and leaving 6,237 remaining still available when they were minting. They've now since closed the mint, and actually if you go and look on OpenSea, uh, you'll see that you can't even see them on OpenSea. So I don't really know what's happened there. Maybe they've changed to OpenSea, or maybe they've gone a different way. I know they had a lot of backlash from it. Um, I guess the thing was that they... You know, they were thinking that the people that were going to buy them were going to be their regular customers. Now, I don't know how many people know this, but I've, uh, I've got a brother. In well, obviously, you don't know this bit, but uh, my brother-in-law, he has a Porsche. And the thing is, with the Porsche, you can't just go in the showroom and just buy one. You have to actually have an invite from them. And you have to become a customer with them and spend, you know, years buying Porsches. You can't just, you know, unless you've got a buttload of money, I guess. You know, I don't know what um, whether they do that or not. But as far as I'm aware, as long as you, if, even if you've got a buttload of money, 
money. You still have to be invited. You still have to be a customer of Porsche in order to be able to get the next model or be able to actually get allowed to buy the car, essentially. So maybe they were thinking the similar idea with their NFTs. They will make it sort of an exclusive thing. Um, but as far as I can tell, they haven't got any utility with them either. Um, but they are going to start building in utility, apparently, for the people who bought it. So that's what they're saying now. But all in all, it was a big, uh, a big for the space. Um, so, but then maybe the the space they're after is not necessarily the space for NFTs either. Anyway, so maybe they'll figure out a way to change that around at a later date. But obviously, it's a massive name getting into the the space. Apparently, the the the, um, the actual minting was a, a bit of a disaster as well. Um, who they used? So uh, who knows? If they'd come to Vivi and done it, then uh, hey. They may have had a lot, a lot better luck. So maybe that's a good thing for us. The fact that it went so badly, it means that some, uh, you know, as we have, we've already got Lamborghini. So maybe it won't be long until they bring the uh, the Porsche 911 along. Because what's happening is that these these people are getting these people, these companies, these big companies, or Web2 companies, obviously, and, you know, products, are getting into the Web3 space. And they're just kind of jumping in it. And they're not really sure where to go. The good thing about Vivi is they kind of hold your hand, bring you in, and then they put it to their followers. And Vivi's got so many followers and people who will buy these products whereas other companies who are kind of not in the same vein they put it out there and then just nothing happens nothing sells and then the company realizes their mistake and then hopefully that will mean that when you know when they look around at the space and they see the lambos with vivi and stuff like that maybe they'll think of going down the vivi route instead and it might be better fit in the long run but you know i digress uh, that's what happened with the open sea and uh, incidentally these are all interoperability or operable even they're on open sea or they were and uh, and look what happened so um that that kind of goes to uh, one of the things i'm going to talk about in a minute anyway let's get into it shall we let's move on to the next thing and that is this whoops not finn I clicked the button too quickly. Uh, so here we go. Uh, this is what we're talking about today. We are talking about the fact that there is so much VV fun out there. It's absolutely ridiculous. The amount you see on Twitter and all this kind of thing. And I get it to an extent. You know, there's a lot of these, um, the things that they said that they were going to do, they haven't come through with yet. Yet is always the word. Now, I know there's the whole thing, hashtag soon and all that. And oh, VV Moonboy expects this. And, that. and oh, it's been three years and they still haven't done this. And it's been five years and they still haven't done it. Now, there are this this is true. This is true. A lot of these things haven't been hit. But let's take a look because one of the main things I've invested now, I'm not sure who it was who said this. So maybe you can let me know in the comments. I did try searching. I couldn't find it anywhere. And it was, I'm not going to direct quote it because I can't remember who said it or what it was. But basically the gist of it is, or maybe it's just general investing practice. And that is the look at the company that you invested in. If nothing has changed, if the fundamentals are still there, then your investment is still sound, basically is what they were saying. So therefore, let's have a look at what's changed in Vivi, because quite a few things have changed, but did they change for the better or did they change for the worst? And that is the thing we need to look at. So let's start off, first of all. Uh, now, I've got a list of them just here, so uh, do, do apologize for occasionally looking down. I thought rather than putting them on the screen, uh, in fact, let's get, uh, let's get this out so that way I've got a nicer backdrop at least to have a chat to you about. So here we go. Let's start off with this. So the first thing is buybacks. Now, what did you get into VV because of the buybacks? I'm guessing you probably didn't get in because of the buybacks, but it was probably a main factor. You probably looked at different videos on the internet and different things about the um, the original um, structure of how they were going to do it, thinking, you know what, this is pretty cool because a wow is essentially going to be buying this Omi and then they're going to be keeping it and they're going to be getting rid of it because that's essentially what it is, isn't it? It was like a person with a lot of money who was going to be buying the Omi and then burning it when they needed it. Now, this obviously changed. This changed massively because of the fact that um, they didn't need to do that anymore, essentially, and they couldn't do it because of the fact of all of the different regulations that came in. So therefore, they had to pause buyback. So yes, that changed. However, they now put something in place that's even better than buybacks. They're doing that one-off burn, so that way it gets rid of all of the, the money that you would have had from buybacks anyway, up until this point. And then after that, Everything then is going to go crazy when they actually bring the OUP in. Yes, I know, not yet, soon. When they do, that's when it's going to start going crazy. Now, not necessarily crazy in the terms of OMI tokens going to go up massively or anything like that. I don't know what's going to happen. I can't see the future. But what I can say is when OUP comes in, there's a lot of burn mechanisms for that token. So therefore, that means that all of these things, like even just the fact that we have got Omi to Gem back again, again, because again, when I first invested, Omi to Gem was a thing. And I thought, hey, this is good. I, and I, I actually bought a lot more Omi as that period went on, even in highs, because of the fact I was like, this Omi to Gem thing, if everybody uses Omi in the app, 
it's gonna burn through it like nobody's business, the rate that people are buying these collectibles. And essentially that was true, but then they stopped the Omi to Gem and they said it's not gonna happen anymore. And now they've brought it back, which is absolutely brilliant. Now, again, there are a couple of caveats to that. Obviously, um, you know, it means that there's gonna be a pool of gems and then that is going to be the Omi to Gem pool. And if you buy from that pool, that pool gets lower and that means not everybody can pay with Omi to Gems. But at the same time, when we're losing, using other things in the app, all of those fees go in to that Omi Gem pool. So that essentially means that Vivi don't lose any money, neither do the license source and we still get to use our Omi to buy collectibles if we want which in theory should mean that we are paying a lot less for the collectible and therefore we can also buy anything we like in the store whereas before the Omi to NFT for instance it goes on the secondary market back and forth all you're doing is transferring Omi between the two minus a small burn fee now bear in mind also that burn fee which I kind of forgot and that is that it is a percentage that means the higher the transaction the more is burn and obviously the transactions in the marketplace are a lot more than the originals as well so which one do you prefer do you prefer omi to nft or do you prefer the um omi to gem either way it's still going to burn from that circulating supply and that is the key it hasn't started doing that just yet now what changed with that well, I guess the buybacks were taken off the table now the OUP is going to be in place it's still not yet so that has changed but it hasn't come into fruition yet so you can't really take that as it's changing because you can't say, well, now we're in a bear market, I'm gonna take all my money out of it because of the fact that that's changed, because it hasn't. It's coming, uh, it's just taking a little longer than you wanted it to, simple as that. So that's that one. Um, when we first started in, in, in economy, they had a few licenses. They only had a few of them. In fact, when they very first started, they had one, which was Tokidoki, I believe. That was the first license that came on board. And then there was a few other ones. And there are hundreds of videos from Covell, uh, from myself, from Kyle, from everybody, talking about the possibility of getting Marvel, talking about the possibility of getting Disney, talking about the possibility of getting some of these brands, Jurassic Park. And we're all speculating at this point, when we first invested, when we first got into the app and we invested, we didn't know we were gonna have Marvel, we didn't know we were gonna have Disney, we didn't know about any of those, yet now we actually have them. Not only do we have them, but we also have a lot of great things that go with them because anybody can just have a license to make t-shirts from Marvel and then sell them. But Marvel don't promote them in that sense. But think about it, when I, I made a video long, long time ago and it was like, um, I guess going back about a year and a half ago now, something like that, and it was the first ever Comic-Con that Vivi were going to be a part of. But they weren't part of Comic-Con. They were gonna be in the uh, virtual area and then we're gonna be showing off a metaverse that was nothing to do with them, but through another company. So they were gonna be sort of tagged in with them, et cetera, et cetera. And we were excited about that. We thought, you know, it's great, because you know, one day we'll actually be in Comic-Cons. Well, look at it now, we're actually at Comic-Cons, but not only are we at Comic-Cons, we're also a partner with, with Marvel at the Comic-Con. They're on the same freaking space. So it's not like we're even just in a Comic-Con off in the corner somewhere, we're actually in the main stage of everything. Now, how many other NFT projects can you say have got that? I don't think there's many that you can say that for a start. So, so that's that one, the possible Comic-Cons, obviously you've got Decon as well, and all of these things are bringing more and more people into the space every time they do them. Obviously, something else that's changed. Now, we're talking from way back again, GoChain is now an Ethereum. GoChain wasn't as fast, transactions weren't as reliable, now they are a lot more on IMX. You've also got metadata as well. So even though it's a closed ecosystem at the moment, you've got the metadata. And there was a lot of people fudding about that all the time. Now we've got metadata, okay? So now we've seen a few things in there that we're not particularly happy about. You know, um, the fact that they pay, you know, moderators with collectibles and that kind of thing. I personally see it as, you know, a lot of, and some, some of the team get, uh, you know, get, get certain collectibles or whatever. People are people are moaning about it. I understand it. Uh, VV Vault did a video the other day and if you watch my my video about something fishy i actually alluded to the fact that this might be the reason but it turned out that it was actually an exploit and they've patched that exploit now but this is the reason um, that one of the wallets seems to get a lot of collectibles and then sell them and that is because they are one of the vv main team members and part of their contract was to get collectibles as uh, as a thing you know so from those uh, 80 that they held back then uh, they probably just send one to that person so sometimes they're going to get a really good one sometimes they're going to get a crappy one but the point is that they are allowed to have that as part of their thing.
nothing. So therefore, a lot of uh, blockchain sleuths out there go into detail with that. So you can follow them. Uh, I know Javier Torres is very good at the uh, the blockchain sleuthing, and obviously Omi Daily Burn as well. Uh, so both of those guys check out their Twitters. They sleuth all that kind of stuff, um, and it's great because then Vivi has a reason to to give us reasons for it. You know, so therefore it's great that they come back and they say this is the reason, this is what happened, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So whether you agree with it or not, we have the metadata now, and that was something that everybody wanted. Uh, what else is there? Metaverse speculation. When we first started doing these videos, we were speculating about what the metaverse could look like, how it could be, what could happen. Now, I know it's taken a long time to get to this point, but we now have, uh, you know, the metaverse, essentially. Now, it's not running, it's not working at the moment, but it is still in the process and it's still in the works. As before, it was just a rumour. When I originally invested, it was a rumour, nothing else. There was just like literally this collectibles app and then they said maybe vviverse in 2022 or something so obviously we're slightly on from there now but we've also had a uh, an actual an actual thing telling us about it as well so we know that it's actually coming but it was all just speculation and rumors as to what it would actually look like and what it would be and all that kind of stuff and you've actually had a demo of it now uh so which is kind of crazy to to even just think about so what else is there uh crypto payout that was available. That was something that we were constantly doing videos about. Oh, you know, when payout comes, when payout comes, of course you can't cash out at the moment. Of course you can't. And I know there was a trickle effect of a lot of collectibles and that made things go high. People then bought in higher. I myself did the same thing. I sold a few collectibles. I couldn't cash out. So therefore I was like, right. So I just went and bought a load of collectibles. I thought well, rather than holding gems that are worth nothing, I'll buy some collectibles. At least they've got the possibility to go up. Little did I know they'd all go down. <laughs> and I paid a lot more for a Mickey Mouse than I should have done. But you know, it is what it is and that is about your investment but will it go back up again to the same levels who knows we can't tell but what i'm saying is that all that's changed nothing about the app has really changed okay so some promises weren't met and some of the stuff that they were supposed to deliver on wasn't delivered on however the actual fundamentals of what they were trying to achieve have not changed in fact if anything those fundamentals have progressed massively to where we are today with the vviverse almost being done uh, interoperability uh, on its way very very soon we'll talk about that in a second um, obviously IMX which obviously made the possibility for interoperability but they're still sorting that out at the moment and again we'll get back to that in a second um, and other stuff like that so all of this stuff is definitely coming and it's not speculation we've been told it's coming and it's coming down the way so at this time in a moment when it's a bear market everything's so low everyone's getting a bit worried about stuff just know that everything is coming it just might take a little bit longer than you think, basically. So that's really the only thing, isn't it? Now, um, a few other things as well. And this is something that uh, I was watching the Crypto Rain interview the other day. Uh, and this was really interesting. And um, I haven't had a chance to watch it all, unfortunately. But I've got up to, you know, to 25 minutes in or whatever. One of the things they were talking about was exchanges. So uh, we'll talk about exchanges in a second. But one of the things Reese did say is that everything was built for mobile. So originally, everything was built for mobile, including the fact that you could use Omi to gems inside the app, etc., etc. But... Um, they basically said, look, we're going to shut your app down unless you take that away. So therefore, they had to take away those other forms of payment. They weren't allowed to have them in the mobile. We now know this to be the case anyway. Apple have actually physically come out and said they won't allow any other payments or forms of crypto in the app. So now, not only did they have the app, they also had to build the web app, which again is something that again was speculation and everything when we first started doing videos. Now, I'm going back quite a while now, obviously like two, two years ago now, I guess, when I first started uh, doing videos for Vivi. And that was all speculation as well and now the web app has come to fruition as well so again maybe a search bar doesn't work here and there but the actual app itself is all built the app is built inside the the phone people can actually get on and buy their collectibles if they want to they can use the market when we first started the market used to close down for months at a time they used to close it every time there was a drop because of the fact that they didn't have the infrastructure to be able to sort everything out but now leaps and bounds on from that so when people are nitpicking on certain little things I think you've got to sort of zoom back and look at the whole picture of Vivi. Uh, someone asked me the other day in the chat, they said, oh, well, knowing what you know now, are you still bullish on Vivi? And the answer is yes. For me, yes. Because when I first invested, none of this stuff was even fruition at all. None of it. It was all just speculation and rumor. And now, although it's taken a long time, well, I say long time, like we're talking two years, which obviously is a long time in the crypto world. But now we're in the bear market. It doesn't really matter, does it? Because at the end of the day, 
and until that bull market starts up again and people start getting more into the space and we start getting normal people in the space because bear in mind this is what vivi wanted is the normal people they're not really that bothered um about the, the you know the crypto bros or anything like that because that's not their market their market isn't crypto people their market is normal people who want to buy a collectible of an ip they enjoy and that is the massive difference between vv and other uh, you know, uh, crypto companies, essentially. And, you know, it, it's just a sort of a stands to reason thing. But let's talk about a few of the FUD that people have been saying and why I don't think it's too much FUD, really, in that sense. Uh, the first thing is more exchanges. Everyone's been complaining about more exchanges. Where are the exchanges? Why is there no more exchanges coming in? And the perfect answer is, as what Reese said in the Crypto Rain interview the other day, and that is that, obviously, we are currently in a bear market and exchanges don't see the point in listing and neither do they and neither does anyone else you, you think about it, there's so many projects out there that i've talked about over the two years or even that i've just known about they've just stopped completely like um i'm just trying to think now off the top of my head um like, that i don't see building at all you know even the big big projects they just sort of stopped they just kind of faded into nothingness for the moment okay they might be building in the background but as far as i'm aware vivi is one of the only companies that are constantly bringing out drops and constantly selling out still even in a bear market so that to me means that there's something special about what they're doing and it's not just crypto people who are buying these items and just getting them because they want them to go up they're getting them because you know like crypto at the end of the day is people investing to make money whereas what vivi are after are the people who are there for collecting and also to create a community around that collectability. So whether it be using your showroom, whether it be sharing your space or whatever it is, that's what they're there for. They're not there for just getting people to buy the collectible and then complain when it doesn't go up because they haven't implemented this, they haven't implemented that, or can we get this because we should be getting free this because I've been holding it for a year or whatever. Just because other collectible companies do that, or uh, not collectible companies, but collectible projects, shall we say, um, because they do that, and, but that doesn't mean a thing. You know, what's the point of getting one good thing and then getting sent another good thing or like you know well one thing and getting sent another nft but they're both worth nothing it's just it's just getting extra things for no reason and i've sort of learned this from being in the space now because i've been involved in a few projects uh, one of the projects i was involved in was that imx squirrels or something now i hold an imx squirrel incidentally and it's worth nothing Absolutely nothing at all. So I minted one of those at Mint because I thought, hey, I like the art. It's quite nice. It's on IMX. I mint one of them, uh, support the calls or whatever. And the person ran off in the end or whatever, or they just stopped the project. And there was a couple of people from the community who were trying to keep it going. And in the end, it went to nothing. And that was interoperable, by the way. You could you could sell that, you know, in OpenSea if you wanted to, or not OpenSea, uh, in uh, IMX uh, uh, Marketplace and all that. And, um, you know, nobody bought it nobody wanted it so therefore i'm still stuck with that screw i'm stuck with one of those crows as well from the imx as well so you know these are all things that i bought and i'm completely stuck with vivi i don't feel like i'm stuck with it i feel that at some point it may my investment may be worthy of you know of coming to fruition because of all the stuff they're building for the future essentially so uh, some of the fud that people have been talking about is interoperability okay this is one of the main ones they're saying they're not nfts unless they're interoperable blah 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 so basically what comes with interoperability i've done this in a video before but just very quickly more security issues a lot more security issues everyone who's got a bored ape is actually a target for hackers so many people get targeted so that they can you know oh here's a link for this and they click on it and then they get all their wallet drained without them even realizing and then by the time they do it's too late they've lost all their stuff interoperability that's what that causes because then that means that you know as it stands at the moment if somebody sends you a link for you to connect your wallet somewhere nothing happens to your vv stuff at all it's quite safe on the app as it is okay so i guess you could get hacked for your password etc then they could use your password etc etc but that could happen at any account on any time but as it stands at the moment in terms of you actually stumbling and accidentally getting rid of all of your collectibles by clicking on a link the chances of that are fairly nil because they're inside the app okay so so that's that so there's your first one the security concerns also if you move them off of the app 
then there becomes no utility for the, the token at all because it's just then a token and that's it. You wouldn't get airdrops anymore. If you were to get airdrops, you wouldn't be able to put it in your showroom. You wouldn't be able to put it in your VVverse so that people could come and see it. Or maybe you could because they're going to be interoperable with other um, wallets and stuff as well. And again, when you say about interoperability, do you mean just you want to put it on OpenSea because you want to sell it? Because that's essentially what people are talking about. They just want to be able to sell it for a lot more money than what they think they can get with the app. Well, I don't think that's going to make a lot of difference anyway. When it goes to OpenSea at the moment, OpenSea volume is down anyway. Maybe in a bull market, yes. So why do you want op interoperability now? They say, oh, it's the whole basics of Web3. Well, it, it is and it isn't, isn't it really? You know, We've been fed this line about the fact that it's going to be your custody, your thing, and therefore that's what Web3 is all about. It's not really. <laughs> But the point is that it is part of that. So that's why people are saying it's not an NFT because of that. Well, NFT, strictly speaking, is just the token itself, isn't it? So therefore, or the receipt for the token. So therefore, you know, it, it, to me, it doesn't matter whether it's interoperable or not. Obviously, I guess you could say if it goes to OpenSea, fetches a lot of money, that means that the price goes up in the app. Then that means that you've got a better investment. That's what people are worried about at the end of the day is whether or not they bought their thing and it's going to go up in price. Otherwise, other than that, there's collectors who actually like the thing and they like playing with it in the, in the showrooms and all that kind of thing. So the people who want interoperability are the ones that just want to try and make some money off of the thing. And that, again, is not what VV are aiming at. So what else is there? Well, there's a barrier to entry, first of all. By putting it as interoperable, there's a massive barrier to entry for anybody because not only do they, they can't just go on the VV app, buy their thing, and then, you know, have it on there. Well, they can. And then if they want to transfer it off to OpenSea or something because everyone's saying, oh, it's better on OpenSea, you can sell it, then they've got to try and learn how they can do that. Okay, so they've got all that sort of things. But I think one of the main reasons it hasn't become interoperable as it stands at the moment, I can't even say that word, is because of the fact that um, both OpenSea and IMX are even not even interoperable between each other at the moment. And OpenSea are going to integrate IMX at some point, but they haven't at the moment. So what's the point of VV being uh, oper interoperable with IMX? Because nobody uses IMX at the moment really anyway either. Uh, that's kind of gone downhill massively. You know, a lot, there's, a, there's a few things on there that are, you know, are gaining traction, but not many. And, and mainly, a lot of them are things, you know, like uh, the uh, the ReFriends guy. Um, he, he's the only one, really, who's got a, a collection on there and maybe a few of the OG ones. But a lot of them on there are just, you know, you just bought them and they just they just took a dive, basically. So why are you that bothered about putting it on IMX? Surely you want to wait until it comes to OpenSea and then at least you've got IMX and OpenSea, and then maybe other places as well. But until they get their code sorted at their end and all their things sorted, then Vivi are not going to be able to do that because as it stands at the moment, they have to pay licensor fees. So therefore, when you transfer it to say OpenSea, if you were then to sell it, then that means the licensor wouldn't get any money for it, so they'd lose a lot of money. So that is probably why they're not going to be interoperable straight away, uh, and that's one of the reasons. But you know, uh, so yeah, so there'll be a big barrier to entry because of that reason. Now, in terms of more exchanges, a lot of people have been asking about more exchanges as well. And now I don't see the whole point of this more exchanges thing. Um, to me, the only reason people want more exchanges is because, yes, I guess it will help in the long run because of the fact there'll be more ways for people to buy the token. But I think the main reason that people are complaining they want an exchange is because they want to see a pump in the token. That's it. Nothing else other than that. They just want to see the token because whenever an exchange is listed, obviously, or especially if it's a big one like Binance, straight away you'll see a massive rise in the token because a lot of people are buying it so that they put it on the exchange and then as soon as the token goes live on that exchange they're expecting everyone to buy their tokens so they can sell it quick and make a profit simple as that so therefore that is what's going to happen it will be a pump and then it will be a massive dump and we'll get back to where we are again and if you do that in the bear market especially we've already seen how Porsche put out their thingy now funnily enough if Porsche had put their, their stuff out in the bull market they probably would have sold out not because of the fact that um, it was such a great thing to buy, but because of the fact that the space at that time were paying a lot of money for stuff. They were happy to be buying stuff because the elation was there. They were seeing the elation of everything going up and they thought they couldn't lose. It's when things start to go down that you start sort of taking a little bit more stock of what you're going to buy. And therefore, you sort of look at it and go, hmm, can I really afford that? Do I want to pay that? Is it going to come off? Whereas what was happening before is that you could put out any project that was, you know, whatever in Ethereum and people would buy it. 
people would actually buy it because they figured that this was a thing. You know, I saw um, those mech warriors or whatever they were going for like four ETH or eight ETH. People were paying that for those things. And now you can, I don't even know what they are now. I don't even want to look, to be honest with you, but I never got one of those. I saw a big thing in Vivi where everybody bought those, um, what were those things? They were made up of toasters and uh, thingy. It was like an, an African artist from what I can gather and it was supposed to be to do with a charity uh, thing and he was quite a famous artist and everyone in Vivi was talking about him and everyone minted one. And I was upset with myself because I didn't manage to mint one. But what happened? The floor of them just shot massively and now, you know, they're nowhere to be seen. So, uh, you know, it's uh, it's one of those things. If they'd have minted at that point, they would have gained a lot of traction with it, but they didn't. Uh, and therefore, it's exactly the same with exchanges. If we go on an exchange in this time of climate, nothing is going to happen. All that's going to happen is it's going to go up, 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 and then you're going to look at it and go, oh yeah, this is good, the token's going up. And you might not be in, it, like, protect, like, wanting to sell at all, but then what's going to happen is that everyone who was waiting to get out is going to get out and it's going to go back down again. Simple as that. And then you just want the next exchange and the next exchange. But what is going to be huge, and this is the thing that I've been looking forward to for the entire time. And Reese has actually started talking about this a lot in interviews. And he actually talks about it 25, 10, 25 minutes in to the interview. So if you want to go and see that Crypto Range channel, I'll leave the uh, thing in the comments below. 25, 10, he talks about how um, they're planning to get uh, Komi, or Omi shall I say, into the web app. And that is going to be huge. When you can actually go to the web app and you can do one click button to buy the Omi to be able to then spend it on collectibles or spend it on whatever and it comes direct from circulating supply because it comes direct from a crypto provider, that is going to be better, in my opinion, than exchanges. And I've said this many, many times in videos in the past. Some people agree, some people don't. But I believe that this is going to be the catalyst that goes Omi to the moon rather than putting exchanges where it's just going to pump and dump in a bear market. Simple as that. But anyway, I digress. So basically, I guess the whole thing of there is, has anything changed? In my view, yes, it's changed. But it's changed for the better. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you on the next video.